Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. <sighs> okay, so today's episode is about my continuous exploration with the masculine. Uh, I say that kind of jokingly because, um, you know, I share on here a lot of my fun escapades uh, with the opposite sex just because it's like so interesting for me. I really look at myself as like this explorer, this like researcher who's like out here figuring out how we connect to each other. And <laughs> I just find it really fun. Like I, uh, anyway, so recently I've made a decision. I've made a decision that until I hit a certain financial goal, I am not open to being in a romantic partnership. This is the first time that I have ever put myself first in my life. Like I am such a lover girl, you know, like I'm like, I love love. I love being in relationships. I love being on a team with someone and like feeling this partnership. I have been in relationships since I was 18 years old. So this current time period right now, this one that we're in right now, this version of Brittany Bond, this is the longest I have ever been single. Yeah. Your girl needs some time to be single. I know what you're thinking and I agree with you. So I'm out here like, who is Brittany Bond as a single woman? You know, like I've been single in the past, but I was always, um, I was still like seeing like multiple lovers at the same time. And like still, it was still like exploring sexuality and relating just like on a more casual basis. Right now I am like, I don't have any desire to explore uh, re any sort of relating. Like my therapist was like, Brittany, you have, you have figured out what you want in a relationship. I don't think you need to get into any more relationships and, you know, try and make it work. It's like, you know what you want, you know, you know what you deserve, you know what your standards are. So now it's just about sticking to them. And if someone doesn't meet your standard from the beginning, not trying to teach them how to get there or guide them there. It's like, and also that doesn't work anyways, but you know what I mean? Like, um, I think there was some part of me in the past that was just like, okay, maybe I'll, maybe this is okay. You know? And now it's like, no, it's not okay. And I knew that from the beginning and I was just lying to myself trying to make it work. <laughs> you know, the whole thing about dating potential, you cannot date someone's potential. It's not fair to anyone involved. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to the other person. Do not date someone if you feel like whoever the version they are right now, if you're like not okay with that version and you're like constantly trying to get them to be a different version of themselves, that is what you call dating potential because you can see the potential of who they can become if they work on themselves. But that is not actually a positive or healthy thing of way to be in relationships. So the more, the more healthy thing is to be like, if this person never changes, if they never change who they are in their life, if they're always constantly this person, am I okay with this? Do I love this person? Do I want to be with this person? Anyways, so don't take potential. But so for me, like right now, I'm just like, I am vibing so hard by being by myself. I'm like, I'm like in my house at night with Afro, just like making dinner and dancing around my house naked, just like having the best time, like by myself and really learning who this version of me is because, you know, this version of me was different than it was six months ago or one year ago. Like I really feel so much more in my power, so much more like I give no fucks. This is who I am. I'm here to shine. I'm here to put myself first. And by putting myself first, I'm actually putting everyone first because when a woman takes care of herself, she has more bandwidth to take care of everyone else around her that she loves. And it's also, I feel like an act of rebellion if a woman is able to put herself first in current society, which is programming us to completely put ourselves last to the point of burnout and serve everyone else around us. Um, so, you know, it's like such a big deal in order to put like for a woman to be like, no, this is what I need for myself and to speak up for it. So what I need right now and what I choose right now is for me to focus on myself and my business. Um, it's just like all the impact that I'm creating, build out a lot of different projects that I've had in my vortex for years. That's in my brain. I have so many, I am an entrepreneur by heart. Like for me, building businesses, creating impact is the way that I play. 
like, yeah, of course I love to play through sex. I love to play through pleasure and I love going on adventures. That's for me a big play. That's why I've traveled all over the world. Um, so, but building out stuff is something that I've always like loved to do. But in the past I was trying to do that while also being in a very deep partnership and with men that turned out to not so much support or be, even if they wanted to support, not having the capacity to do it in a way that was supportive, all the things, it just didn't work. I don't want to put, there's no judgment on any of these people that I dated. I think I was for a long time, like playing the game of relationships in the sense of like really going all in on relationships and learning so much and experiencing so much. And now I have, I have, I feel very full on that for the moment. And now I'm excited to play the game of I say game in the sense of just like putting all your focus into something and like having fun with it, like playing, you know, like everything's like a game in life and we can have as much fun as possible. And so like for me right now, playing is, um, is, is like focusing on all the impacts that I'm here to give into the world and really putting myself in that energy of like being excited for it, like building things out, creating events, like expanding, expanding, expanding. And what's so funny about this is that when you do this, when you, when, when a woman puts herself first, it is like the most yummy vibration for everyone to experience around her. Because for me, I'm just walking around like, I know what I want. I know what I'm doing with my life. I'm here. I'm serving. You know, I got, I got things to do you know, like, so when I'm like, especially when I'm at the gym, the gym is like, especially on this island, the gym is like such a vortex of just like intense masculine energy. I'm sure this is everywhere, but here, like on the island, everyone's mostly half naked all the time. And we're living on a tropical sexy island. So I feel like it intensifies even more. And so I'm just there in my bikini, like in my sauna, do my sauna thing and like having some business calls in the, in the sauna area. And I think because I know this is, when you put yourself first as a woman, especially when you close off the reality of like, like I don't need outside external energy in order, f- I don't need a-, a validation in order to feel good about myself. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. When, when the masculine encounters this energy, it is like, oh, she's like really good. She doesn't need me. She doesn't. And it's like, it's like, I think for a lot of men in today's world, one, it's confusing. And then like, they don't know what to do with that because <laughs> they're just so used to like women, like wanting this external validation. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear this, but Afro is like licking herself and scratching herself like right next to me. She got a haircut yesterday. She's so cute. I love her. Anyway, so um, when a man can sense that a woman doesn't need this external validation, it's like, uh, it's like, it's like, then how do I put this in words that are grounded? I want to speak in esoteric energy right now. Um, let's just say that the attraction that a man, the masculine has for the feminine when she's really allowing herself to be in her feminine power, which is to choose herself and to like put this energy into herself into feeling good in her own body. The masculine comes and it's like, oh, this energy feels even more yummy. I, I, I want to like, <laughs> basically you're unavailable. So I want to chase you even more and you feel good within yourself. So like it is the most attractive thing for a man to be around a woman who is feeling good in her body and is to really, and who's like really vibing with herself. That energy to be around for a man is like so yummy. So with all of that being said, I'm just out here vibing with myself and, um, and having a great time and focusing on my me and playing with Afro and my friends and building out all my projects. And the men around me are just like popping up out of everywhere. Just like, hi, hi, hi. Um, I know you said you didn't want to date anyone right now, but like, hi. So like, I'm this really great guy and like, maybe we should hang out. And I'm just like, you sound like a really nice person, <laughs> but no, thank you. Uh, and maybe we can be friends and da da da. So, I matched with this guy on Bumble. So here's an example. I matched with the guy on Bumble. This was like when I first got back from the island, uh, from the state. So maybe a month and a half ago. And he lives in Samui. And he's like 42 or something. Like, And that at the time was like really exciting for me because I'm like, none of these men, man children anymore. Like I want to date like a real man here. Someone who is emotionally mature, established, successful, and just has space to hold, you know, 
and knows how to hold that space. I don't need to teach them. So anyways, I matched with this guy and like, he was like, oh, um, I'd love to meet up with you. And you know, like everything you're doing sounds amazing. Just like all, you know, positive energy. And uh, I'm coming over on my jet ski to one of the parties that I go to, like on uh, like Bamboo, Wainam, like some of these parties that are on the other side of the island of Kopanyong. So he like c- took his jet ski over there and um, I saw him in the water and I was just like, I'm doing my thing. Like you do your thing. Like, it's just funny. There's just like, when you're really feeling good in yourself as a woman, it's just like, it's like nice to receive this masculine attention, but I don't need it, you know? And this is a huge shift for me. So um, anyways, he ca- so that was like a couple weeks ago. We didn't end up meeting up that day, but he kept messaging me. And then re- like in the last couple of days, he came to Copenhagen to like um, to business deal or something. I don't remember what it was, um, visit friends and stuff. And he's like, I want to take you out for dinner and, you know, can I see you? And I said, I want to just be very clear that, like, I'm not in a mode right now where I'm dating anyone. I am focusing on my business. And this feels really good for me. Like, this is, like, clear communication. If you want to be friends, that's great. I know that I match with you, like, in a time period where I was looking maybe open to something romantic, but this has shifted. So just, like, being transparent, you know. And he was like, that's great. Uh, I understand. Like, yeah, I'm happy to be friends. And then um, two mornings ago, I go to take Afro for a walk at the beach at like my normal beach. I go in the morning and um, I'm like walking. So I hadn't met this person in real life yet until what I'm about to tell you. So um, I go walk on the beach and he's walking up like from the beach. He's leaving the beach and I'm coming to the beach and we just see each other and we like start laughing because we're like, okay, maybe this was meant to be, you know, like out of all the beaches on the island, out of all the time periods, like the time moments, <laughs> moments in time, whatever words, at, to be there at the exact same time and to run into each other. Um, uh, it felt very synchronistic. And so I was more open to, I'm always listening to divine guidance. So I was like, okay, maybe there's something here, you know? And so we went for a little walk on the beach and talked. And then he said, you know, I'm leaving tomorrow. I would love to see you again. And this earlier this week I wasn't I really was like I had like a fever and stuff and I just wasn't feeling good so I just said I'm not feeling super great so let's just flow with it and if I'm feeling up for it I'll let you know and I didn't message him and then the next morning same thing happens I go to the beach and I turn around and he's like right there but this time he was like yeah I was kind of hoping that I would see you like now that I know this is like where you take your dog and stuff and he's like I'm leaving for Samui soon but I would love to take you for like a drink a coffee or something and I was like okay so we sat on the beach and we had a coffee and you know he asked me like what what are you looking for right now like what are you what are you passionate about and I immediately went into all the impact I'm making all the projects I'm working on everything I'm building out and he was just like oh that's nice but like what are you like, cause I said something like, um, you know, uh, I've, I've, I've really played, played it out when it comes to relationships. And now I'm really focusing on myself and like, I just know what I want in a relationship. And he was like, Hey, what do you want? And I, I shared with him, I was like, someone who's mature, someone who ha- has emotional availability and can hold space for me emotionally. And someone who, you know, like can hold space for me being like, I am an intense, serious person sometimes. And also at the end of the day, I want to laugh about it. Like I want someone to hold me, hold space for me and my feelings. I don't need them to feel my feelings, but just to be like, okay, I got you. Like, let me try and understand where you're coming from. Cause really like the intensity that is me, is just because I'm a very sensitive person and I feel everything, you know, I just like everything that comes into my vortex, it goes through my feeling body and I have to process it. And it's really nice when someone wants to hold space for that. And then after I do that, I just want to laugh about it and I want to go on adventures together. And, um, I just want to have fun. Like we're here to have fun, you know? Um, and so we, um, we, uh, sorry, Afro just keeps like, <laughs> like biting herself and like just making these really funny like noises. I don't know if you can hear, but it's really funny. It's distracting me. So anyways, I shared with him that, but I was also like, I like, that's like when the relationship happens. Right. But I'm not, I'm not focusing on that right now. Right now I'm focusing on, and I'm excited about all the impact I'm making and, and like building myself out and focusing on me. Um, 
And so then we, I said, okay, I need to go. Like I have my, I have stuff to do. Like I live here. I have my schedule. Like I love creating this like masculine container for myself where I bop around and I have my little schedule. And he was like, okay, uh, sounds good. And then he walks me like up to the rest of the end of the beach. And then he tries to kiss me. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? And I just pull away from him. And I'm like, I don't want to kiss you. I, I like made that very clear. And he was like, well, your eyes are so mesmerizing. And I'm like, dude, you are not listening. Like, you have just like, you have just lost all chance with me in any way, even as a friend, because. And I said to him straight up, I was like, do you know how many guys are trying to get in my vortex right now? Like, even as a friend and. You just like cross my boundaries. Like I told you, I don't want to be romantic with you. You don't have to hang out with me after that. Like I, I've made it very clear. Like I'm not being like, I'm not, I'm not being confusing. I'm being very clear in my communication and for a person to be like, okay, I understand you. And then to act completely the opposite of what I just communicated. I was like, this is disappointing. Like, what the fuck? And now I feel like I just wasted time hanging out with you. But then I asked myself, like, what is the lesson here? Like, why did I bump into this person? Why did I keep, like, you know, what? why did this happen? And I think it was a test for me of staying in my own alignment of what I've decided for myself, of like putting myself first and just focusing my energy on me. Because, you know, and if you do research on this, so much of what women talk about is the men in their life. And of course, like we love love, right? So we're, lo- we're, into, we're into exploring like communication and connection and like figuring out relationship dynamics. Like women love this. And I'm here for that. I love that too. That's why I love talking about this kind of stuff. And at the same time, I'm like, how often do you hear a woman sharing her story of what she's going through and not focusing, not having like her partner be the main focus of her life, not having, like they they were saying like in movies, um, especially up until the 90s, like uh, the amount of times women actually spoke in a movie was like so much percentage less. Like I think it was like uh, 20% of how much like like time men actually spoke in a movie. And, and then even then when the woman would speak, she would usually speak about a man, a partner, or some love interest. And I'm just like, whoa. Like, as females, like, how much are we focusing on men <laughs> and, and whatever is happening with them instead of what's happening in our interpersonal world and what we want to build out and what we are here to accomplish and what is our soul mission? And, of course, I'm going to always be a lover girl. I fucking love love. I'm like here for all the stories. Like whenever someone's like, yeah, I just fell in love. I'm like, tell me everything. (laughs) I want to know. When when, when some of my friends just started dating, I'm like, how did you meet? Tell me about how you fell in love. I just love it. Like for me, it's so beautiful to celebrate these connections that we have. And also it's really beautiful to celebrate the connection that you have with yourself. Like how many of you have taken the time to really connect with yourself? And to get to the point where you love being alone, you love being with yourself as a single person so much that anyone who adds to that or comes into that vortex needs to add to it. So how much are you giving to yourself first? And how much are you putting yourself first? You see men doing this all the time. Like I've experienced this so much in my life where I'm interested in a guy and he's like, yeah, it's, it's really nice to have this connection with you, but like I need to focus on my stuff. I need to build this thing out in the world. This is my sole mission. And in the past, I was like, okay, respect. Like, I respect that, but that wasn't really my, my, my priority in the past was love, was relationships, and then my soul mission. And now I'm like, soul mission is the only thing I'm focusing on right now. And of course, I'm doing the play parties. Of course, if there's someone there to play in the play parties and it's a beautiful connection, that's great. But in my everyday reality, I'm focusing on me. <laughs> and I just feel like, you know, like there's like in, in the movie where they're just like, no, get out of the way, <laughs> like next, next. But for me, it's not even next. It's like, no, like, please get out of my vortex because I'm focusing on me and everything else is kind of this distraction right now. And it, it really does feel like a test of just, Brittany, this is your moment to shine. This is your moment to put yourself first. And like, are you going to even if the guy has a jet ski and wants to take you on all these adventures, you know, even if he says all the right things, 
But like at the end of the day, can he honor who where you're at in this moment? Because I was like also thinking, you know, if someone doesn't, if a guy doesn't want to be my friend, of course, there's this whole thing about friend zoning and right. But you can still be in a woman's life and be her friend while still keeping the polarity. Like, you know, like all these things like men fear like being friend zoned if they like a woman. A woman knows if you like her and you can still hold that polarity balance while still showing up for her as a woman in your life without like being like, oh, you know, friend zoning is when a woman starts looking at you as if you're in the, if you're in your leading with your feminine energy. But you can be a friend to a woman and still be in your masculine energy and still lead with your masculine energy and show up for her as a masculine um, and still be interested in her. And honestly, you'll win so many, in English we say brownie points, which means like, she's like, she can feel that you are attracted to her and that you're honoring what she needs in that moment. So for me, it's like to be friends right now. And also she can feel that you're actually showing up for her. And all of those things lead to trust. It leads to safety. It leads to deeper connection. And after my last relationship, I just really realized how much like I need to feel like this person actually is my friend first. And I'm talking about you can still have the polarity balance and the spiciness and the juiciness and all of those flirtiness. But I want to know at the end of the day, like, do they care about me as a person? Not like, are we trauma bonding and like trying to work out our loops with each other? Um, Because if you have this foundation of friendship first, it you're still going to go through it in relationships. You're still going to bring up each other's trauma. You're still going to, because these things want to be healed and our relationships are our biggest mirrors for each other. And when you go deep with someone, you're going to meet more and more of the things that need to be healed and they want to be healed. And if you built this relationship based on friendship and connection and showing up and support, then it's a safe space to heal those things. If your relationship is built on, um, you know, (laughs) just, I don't know, like physical attraction or rebounding from your last relationship or just anything that is not deep friendship and deep support for each other, then it's going to be very hard when you get to that point when you're actually starting to get triggered and you're actually bringing up your, you know, your, your traumas that want to be healed because you don't have this foundation of... I love you and I care about you as a human first and I want to show up for you as a human first. So that's what I'm here for. I'm here for all of the, and I have, I have, I have, uh, Tango Mas. I have a lot. Uh, um, Tango Mucho. <laughs> I just realized I, my sp- I feel like my Spanish has lost, I've lost my Spanish living in Thailand for so many years, but, um, Anyways, I have a lot of these beautiful men in my life that are showing up for me and do have my back and are my friends. And there still is a polarity balance where they are leading with their masculine and it feels really good. It actually is the first time where I'm allowing myself to be led by my male friends in the sense of like allowing them to show up for me in different ways and allowing myself to be in my feminine energy around them. And that's so beautiful. And I'm here for all of it. So I'm going to hop off now um, and I just want to share the story with you (laughs) and uh, to activate you also that if you are focusing on yourself or if you have the standard that you are choosing to keep, to keep it, do it, follow your soul mission, follow whatever is needed for you and your growth in that moment, because that is what's going to take you to the next level and help you to shift into the life that you dream of and you deserve it. (sighs) Okay, reporting live. This is Brittany Bond signing off. I hope you have a beautiful day.